Welcome to the Crush It in Sales podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. This podcast focuses on the intersection of sales, leadership, and personal development. Now let's get ready to dig in and crush it. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Crush It in Sales podcast. I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy, and if you're like me, trying to stay really busy and productive and make the best use of this time, I know we all feel extreme gratitude for all essential workers. I know there's a lot of um, appreciation going on. I know New York, New York City is clapping in the evening. I've seen uh, Kara Allwell's posts about that, and that's just beautiful. It brings tears to my eyes, and just really know that People at home that are just trying to stay out of the way really have immense appreciation for everyone out there that is uh, helping all of us. I waved to the Publix grocery store truck driver this morning. I don't think he saw me, but I never thought to do that before. I was like, thank you for delivering groceries down to the Keys because without that person, we wouldn't have any food down here. So everyone is very appreciated, and I just wanted to kick off this podcast by mentioning some appreciation because we all feel it in our hearts and it's probably just not said often enough. So on to a bunch of other stuff I want to talk about this week. And one is a summit that I'm going to be part of this coming weekend, which will be April 9th, 10th, and 11. And it's a child-free summit Rafi Wagner is the host of the summit, and I've gotten to know her recently. She has a new podcast called Not a Mama Podcast, and honestly, she's great. She has a great podcasting voice, and she has awesome guests, and she just has a really fun style. So I found her through one of the Facebook groups that I recently joined, and we connected, and I'm going to be one of the speakers in her podcast. I'm not necessarily going to be speaking that much about not being a mama. I'm really going to be speaking more about navigating change. So if anyone out there happens to have children, please know that you're not excluded from listening to this summit as I will be promoting it on all the socials. And I already started promoting it last week. So definitely tune in if it's something of interest to you. I'm also going to be spending some time this evening connecting with the other speakers as well. I just think it's a great opportunity to connect which has been one of my goals for 2020, and I'm using this time wisely to do that. Another note on the connection topic is the last two weeks of this podcast, I have had interviews, which is not something I do regularly, so it's been fun to have some interviews. So two weeks ago, I had Teresa Pantanella from Right Away Leads, and she is fantastic. If you have not listened to that podcast and you are in the space of being an entrepreneur, wanting to build your business, wanting to level up, and you're interested in marketing online, I highly recommend listening to that podcast. And then I'm in her mini course. She has a four-week course that she started last week, and already in the first week, I have learned so much. She's an amazing teacher. She's extremely patient. She offers a ton of value. And it's not just jargon. I have to say, I've been in this space for a while now, personally, for a couple years, and even before that with my husband behind the scenes, which most people have no idea that I've been helping him behind the scenes. So I've been studying and learning a lot. And I have to tell you, so many people in this space of coaching and entrepreneurship, they just repeat the same stuff over and over and over, and a lot of it's just jargon. So often you'll get off a webinar or a course, and you'll go, what did I learn? Anything? So that is not the case with Teresa. So definitely check that one out. And then last week, I had the honor of having Tibor Nag on, who is from Mindset Horizon, And he lives in Budapest, Hungary, and it was just fun to chat with him. We have a lot of things in common as far as being mindset coaches and liking the same books and tools. So he was on my podcast last week, and I'm going to be on his podcast probably in early May. I think my interview with him is set up for April 29th. So stay tuned for that because I will definitely be promoting his podcast as well. So that was just kind of a little housekeeping news updates. 
Yesterday, Ryan and I recorded a podcast together, which is on the Good Karma Success Coach podcast, which is my other podcast that I've had for a year now. And we have had a really fun time. We started recording a podcast together last July when it was our anniversary and his one year anniversary of having a podcast. He has his podcast, Good Karma Sport Fishing. And so we've kind of made it a monthly tradition to do a podcast together. We really feel our audience likes it. We have fun. We learn a lot. And considering that we um, like to speak together, it's just, it's just been a fun experience. So check that out. We talk about confidence. And, <laughs> and one of the things about confidence is setting boundaries. I have had to really look at my schedule these past couple weeks with, you know, as a sales rep, our lives are a little different right now. We're not on the road. We're treating customers with empathy and kindness instead of asking for a sale. We're just reaching out and keeping in touch with them and making sure that we need, that we are, you know, doing what they need. And so that just makes your, your day a, a little different. And I would say the last couple weeks, I've gotten sucked into a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of Zoom calls at night, which is not how I roll. So I had to dial it back at the end of last week and I had to really think about setting some boundaries and relooking at my schedule because it's so different than what I'm used to. I'm still getting up at the same time in the morning, which is four. I'm still checking my emails like I normally do, taking care of that business. But since I'm not super busy on the phone and on the road, you know, when you're on the road and you're a road rep, you're driving a couple hours a day. Well, now all of a sudden it's like, wow, I have this extra time. So make sure that what you're doing with your time is productive and really helping you grow and what you really need versus just getting sucked into someone else's Zoom marketing calls. So I've had to have some confidence in my schedule and in myself and in what I know I need and I'm looking for, whether it's for myself or for my husband's business, and set some boundaries around that. So I I challenge you to think about that. I haven't heard anyone start talking yet about the overwhelm of Zoom calls, but I started talking about it a couple weeks ago. I wrote an article for Medium, and I know I also put that article on LinkedIn, but I do think there's got to be some other people out there that are like, whoa, where did my day go? I've just been listening to a lot of Zoom calls. So I'm on the page already. I've figured out my schedule for this week. I've blocked off days. I've restructured. I've learned to say no to some things. And I'm starting tomorrow fresh. And I'm very excited about that. I feel really good. The other thing I want to just touch on before I close, and I know this this podcast is just kind of a mixed bag. Um, I'm going to have a lot of interviews in the upcoming weeks, so this one's just kind of a mixed bag. But one of the interviews I'm going to be having in a couple weeks is with Jill Lublin. And I met her online briefly. We haven't really fully connected yet, but I'm going to be having her on my podcast at the end of April or probably be aired in May. But she has a book called The Prophet of Kindness. And if you know me and if you listen to my podcast, either one, Good Karma Success Coach or this one, you'll know that I really try to make sure I have some sort of connection with each of my guests. And by that, I mean, I've read their books, I've met them, we've been in touch, I listen to their podcasts. I just don't tend to do interviews to do interviews. I'm not an interview factory like some of these other podcasts are. So I wanted to get Jill's book first before interviewing her. And I got it the other day. I started reading it yesterday and I was reading a little bit today. So every day I try to read like a chapter or two. And so much in this book, guys, relatable. Oh my gosh. I'm just like, feel like I'm screaming. Yes. Yes. Thank you for calling this out. When I'm reading this book, it's, it's truly amazing. And one of the things that I talked about a couple weeks ago in regards to sales, and I touched on it just a few minutes ago, is, you know, with your clients, you shouldn't be really out there beating down their doors, especially if they're closed. 
if they're still doing business, oh my gosh, totally. That makes sense. It just depends what channel you're in. But in a lot of people's business, they're closed or they're operating very limited or very different, or they're trying to figure it out. So you have to use empathy and kindness to manage through this situation and just not treat everyone the same. So a couple weeks ago, I had some experiences and in chatting with other clients and colleagues of leaders that were still making sales reps make calls, make calls like the stores are still open and everything's fine and it's business as usual. And I've kind of noticed that some leaders have changed their tune for like a call or two or an email. And what happens when you just change your tune overnight People don't believe you. You have no credibility. And it really makes you realize, as someone else who's a leader or someone else that coaches leaders, that you need to be expressing empathy and kindness from the beginning. You can't just turn it off and on like a water faucet. And circling back to Jill's book, which I briefly mentioned, in her chapter on gratitude, she's describing a scenario in which someone on a team had gone in for their annual review and it didn't go as perhaps the employee had hoped, right? So she went to happy hour and they're kind of paraphrasing what could happen at at a happy hour. And that is that the associate starts talking to her friends and says things like, he never greets me. She talks to me like I'm an idiot. They bring me down. He never smiles. And that in general, people feel overlooked and they're tired of it. I have seen this time and time again. And what's shocking to me is that it still goes on. It still goes on. That whole premise of you just need to do what you're told. It's my way or the highway no collaboration, no appreciation for the actual team. Like sometimes appreciation is given out to certain select people, but it's never looked at as a whole from the beginning. You can't just turn it off and on at a company dinner or for one Zoom call or for one email. You have to be exhibiting it all the time. It has to be part of your culture. It has to be part of your personality. Otherwise, people don't believe it. And like this book is saying, The associates go to happy hour and they're talking about it behind that person's back. And that just makes it worse. And a lot of associates, yep, they should stay out of the spin, but human nature is they they get into the spin. And nowadays with all the different channels that people can talk and communicate, it's something to be aware of. So I would just express to any leaders out there is if you notice your behavior hasn't been with empathy and kindness in the past, start to work towards that gradually and know that you have to keep that behavior up. You have to keep that behavior going because just the one and done mentality, oh, well, I had this really great Zoom call. You know, people probably didn't believe you. You have to keep it going. It takes a long time for people to change their mind and think that you're a great leader. So I really like this book, and I'll probably continue to share some nuggets from it. I dog-eared a lot of pages already, and I think I'm only on the second, I'm only on page, I don't know, 81, so I got a while to go. But it's a really great book, The Prophet of Kindness by Jill Lublin, and like I said, I'll be having her on my podcast in early May, and I really look forward to hearing more from her and sharing more with the audience, because... This is right up my alley in regards to leadership and personal development. It all goes hand in hand. Leaders can work on personal development as well as a team member can. We all can. No one's perfect, and we all could be doing a better job of learning and teaching and expressing empathy and kindness. So that's all I have this week. I hope you enjoy my podcast. I know it was kind of a mixed bag of things, but... That's just what I have going on. That's actually kind of how it is right now, right? It's a mixed bag of things. Everyone's days are mixed up. Everyone's trying different things, trying to keep busy. 
doing different things with their families that they've never done before. Here in the Keys, I see people biking and walking more than I've ever seen before, which is crazy. You would think that living in a warm climate year-round, I would see people biking and walking on a regular basis, but really we don't. I'm probably one of the only people I know that walks regularly. So my husband and I went out this afternoon to run a quick errand, and it was fun to see a ton of people biking. So I hope wherever you live, you can get outside as well. So till next time, please remember to follow me on Instagram. It's Melinda underscore Van Fleet. You can also find me on LinkedIn. My email is Melinda at MelindaVanFleet.com. And please share this podcast with a friend, family member, or colleague. Till next time, I hope you crush it in sales. Thank you for listening.